Greetings everybody and welcome back to Disco Elysium. Man, if there's one thing I regret, it's that I went through all the trouble in listening to that big meaty man speech for all that time, only to end up knocking him out regardless. But you know, hindsight. Him out good, like the flying desperado. That I did. Who or what is a flying desperado? It's a really cool flying desperado spin kick you did, Boyadero. Often performed by the most hard-bodied boyaderos on the steps. It was nothing. Yeah, I sure did that thing. <laughs> you know, it's a nugget. Okay. Uh, so, what's on your mind this time? Nothing. Let's go. So, I should be able to go through here now, right? Is that a thing I can now do? Let's speak to the big guy again. Anything you gotta say? What native on the chief, huh? Yeah. Those ballerina antics were reckless. Should have just punched him in the throat again. <laughs> Come on, it did look Let's pretty talk nice, about didn't right it? To work. Okay, um He doesn't seem like he has anything to say here. We have pushed the button, I'm sure. Or do we actually need to push the button? I thought we did that in the line of the dialogue there. Let me double check that really quick. I am very sure that I pushed the button. He is standing again! Do, Do not, not presume this has drastically altered our race in a bit. <laughs> okay, he's standing again. Last time I played, he was still knocked down. But he got up again. He will never gonna stay down. It was just something I had to do. Our personal dynamic has changed. He pauses for a second. A little. You serve the Union, don't you? Aren't they white? What are those tattoos of yours supposed to mean? Let's get over this funky race classification thing again. And... My god, I get... I remember how irritating that was because he just... Keeps talking in full caps lock. Okay, apparently it was not for nothing that we actually went and learned all about this stuff. It's shit. Let me into the fucking harbor. Oh, we actually got a lot of XP for that. Look, babe. The fossilized rock and roll rebel challenged me. A figure of authority. He's trying to reinstate his individualism with swear words taken from the rock songs from the last century. Individualism has really fucked him over, John. He turns to you. Impotent subject of pop culture. I take pity on you. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad. Like a little boy wants to go on the party. I can press the button for you. It will open the door. That's all I wanted. Very well. You may enter the door once. He punches the emergency button with his fist. Our race conversation here has concluded. Finally, let's go. Apparently I should have pressed that button myself before I quit the game last time. Ah oh well. Now we did it. No, we are allowed to pass through here, I guess? Or not? He pressed the button. Am I not supposed to be able to go through here now? Through that big door? Through that big gate? Or is it that door that I need to go through? I'm not sure. Oh, it really was that door. Okay. Oh, sleeping actually heals all of my bodily issues. I'm pretty sure this door used to be closed. Every worker, member of the board, is written at the top of the flyers. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model is name is on the back. There's something lying around there. What is that? It's a postcard. Hopefully not a lethal postcard. Blow the flyers, the union logo, and demand democracy. What do we have here? Standard office file cabinet. The drawers seem to be locked. Someone left the coffee machine on. That's not good. And magnesium. I could probably stand to use some of that myself. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. That does not bode well. Ooh, sunglasses. Neat office shades. Let's put them on. Make us extra pretty. I think we should be able to, right? There we go. 
Uh, we have already checked that one. It's locked. We don't have a key for that. Oh, I did not want to talk to you. Goodbye. Anything else in here? What's that? Oh, it's just a way out, apparently. Okay, cool. I don't really care much. Oh, there's my jacket! Grab the cloak. As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of comfort through your fingertips. I will shield you from the elements and give my life for yours. That's what the cloak is relaying. What a good cloak it is. What kind of stats do I get for that? That's a nice cloak. It's a very nice looking cloak, I gotta say. Plus one shivers. I'm not sure that's good. Or is it? I don't know. I was actually sure that my badge would be in there. Uh, I wasn't done checking out everything in here, so let's go back to doing that really quick. There. Punch clock payphone. <coughs> An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. And all other side says, tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. Why would I even try to... F Who would I even try to call here? Money lost, yeah. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Interfacing. We have a low chance of actually doing that. It worked! Your fingers run over the dial pad. 005. That's a dialing code for Revacore. 4952 and a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers 993. Who are we calling? A crackle. Someone picks up. They say, video revocal, 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lemmy. How may I help you? Video revocal is a 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lemmy. <laughs> okay, it's one of those jobs. I see. No, I meant, what is this place to me? Do you know me? No. No, I meant, what is this place to me? Oh, sure, why not? Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. Why did I call you? Maybe you call to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? Maybe, but I don't even know my name. If you need any further assistance, you can visit us on the corner of Voyager and Main. He sounds annoyed now. I can't help you over the phone. Are we done? The call is terminated by the other party. You're left with the discomforting sound of the disconnect tone. I mean, that was not bad. Maybe that guy has some kind of hint on the actual name of our infamous hobo cop over here. Only one way to find out, I suppose. What do we have here? Collecting rainwater. That's nice, I suppose. Anything over here? There's something over there. Can we check that out? We cannot. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and Potent Pilsner. I know Pilsner. At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really hard here. Wait, how hard? I think we might have been involved here. Well, the lieutenant looks at you, then the bottles. Yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. It is really sad. I must have been miserable. <laughs> Looks like I had a lot of fun. I'm still completely convinced it was me. I must have been on an advanced scouting mission in the harbor. Let's go with that one. Yes. This looks pretty advanced, alright. But let's just move on. Oh, man. That guy must think the world of me, right? This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name on the door reads René Arnaud. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. You need to rest. Your body's aching. Getting in here has taken something out of you. Have a seat. So this is where Rene works. I'm gonna look around. If you must. But please hurry. We're pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. We have taken that picture apparently. Okay. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a royal carabiner uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She's smiling playfully at the camera. 
Why did you take that picture of Rene? I'm gonna ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier, he remarks, surprised. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure, as long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. Alright, we're resting. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the boot. A thin grey pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the styles by black ribbons. Search for a little something something to help you out. Let's try that one. The drawers are empty save for old time sheets and receipts. One small box however does sold some cheap painkillers. They are slightly out of date. Okay, would you mind if I help myself to some mats? Let's just take them. Hypnogama, you take the painkillers, they are yours now. Let's read the side effects of them. Oh boy, where to start? Elevated risk of dementia, mini strokes, prophet's disease, sudden death, hair death, erectile malfunction, critical flatulence, watery blood, black mucus, uncontrollable weeping, increased sensitivity to lopra, inoperable joint disorder, total spinal collapse. Maybe this was a bad idea. You stand up and exit the boot. Okay, we are good to go. Can I go down here? I don't think I can. Oh, we finally got our clock back, so I take that as a W. We can move down here, though. All around you, great machine in quiescence. White pine trees are printed onto the screen covering. Looks like a forest snow. Anything else we can check out in here? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I didn't see... Actually, I see those. So... Oh, hello, what's that? Check it out. A rusting control panel with several knobs, two buttons and marked Aluma and Entendre. A faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Oh no, no, no. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. I'm not sure if I was supposed to do that. But I did. Should be hitting the ground. That does not both well. That does not both well. I shouldn't have touched that, I feel like. It was surprisingly quite thunk the crane places the container down. Nothing about that was quiet. The arbor leaps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Moving this container, of course. For this purpose it was built. For this purpose it has acted and now it will rest. I can see how that was worth the rucus. He looks at the crate. Except for seeing the crate in action. Which, I admit, was satisfying. Okay, I think I am not going to press that button before we have checked out the immediate area here first. What's that? Oh, it's money. Free money. Always a pleasure finding money. You see faded industrial lettering on the platform. Kvalsund. Okay, we actually can enter this and check it out. Kim, I think there's something about this container. Is this like your thing with that wall again? Maybe. I can tell. I think we should investigate further. You do? Because I don't. Well, why not? There are a million containers around here. Why are you fixating on this one? Well, we're hanging from the crane. I don't know, Kim. It just feels special. That's a cargo container, detective, just like all the others. We're not here to interact with containers. We're here to talk to the Union, right? Let's just open the door. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. Doors seem to be mechanically locked. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. That would have surprised me. That would have actually given me any kind of reply. Okay, nothing more to do here. Kvalsund means whale fjord in Arden. Okay, learn something, learn something new. Let's progress in here. It's just nice to see a new area in the game altogether. What's that? Money? Money. This speaker tower is silent. There's no word to organize in the yard below. 
This shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. There's something that might be of interest for us. What's that? Ultra Series Gloves. I don't think I'm wearing gloves right now, so... Let's change that. There. The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. Smells like blood. There's some money. We take it. The industrial-sized thermals. Smells like burnt coffee. More money. And that seems to be an exit. Let's talk to you before we go. Container, container, container. Man, I wish I would ever have this much fun at work. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi. From the vanishing peninsula of Ubi Sunt on Monday. Container, container, used to be well paint. Container, container, now, now belongs to, to Everard. <laughs> what a jolly song. Let's talk to this guy. He seems nice. Everard, Everard, Everard. He looks after everyone. Huh? Well, here there. How can I help you, master? I see, see. you're not a union man, master. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? No, 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 no. I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Alright, what are you doing with the containers? We have seen what he is doing. Apparently he is painting them. Where is everyone? The arbor is empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. Oh yeah, we have seen that. We're on a strike. The whole union in this. You don't have to work when you're on a strike. Ha! <laughs> we haven't worked for two months now. So, no one is working. Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everett is in his office, where he always is, and Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. Oh yeah, we have met Jean-Luc. <laughs> but Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble, and Everett sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. But seems eager to tell him. He seems like, well, come on, tell me more. What kind of trouble did his Titus and his friend get into? Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's Union's business. Him and his boy stirred something up in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everard telling them to take some time off. But what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some stream. <laughs> some steam, not some stream. I don't really know the details. That's just how boys are, you know? I have been in a fight since I was in middle school. I have in a fight just mere minutes ago. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the Hardys. He looks up to you for assistance. Look at him. It's not gonna be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better go with the flow. Too rowdy? Leo, what kind of a fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? I remember I was the runt of the class. He laughs merrily. The bigger boys always used to pick on me. You see, I had a bit of a temper back in my day. Flew off the handle like nobody's business. But Mr. Everard and his brother always came to help. Once they beat old Noel Becker so bad he needed stitches on his head. Noel never started another fight with anyone after this. Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar are really nice guys, mister. You should go talk to Mr. Everard. I'm sure you'll be good friends. He's friends with everyone around here. Well, the guy starts coughing. Okay, anything else? Where is the leader? Oh, yeah, one Mr. Edward then. Yeah, yeah, that's, like a, that's the guy. He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They live their entire lives in this here neighborhood. His brother are real good guys. Mate Martinez is what it is today. Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school. We did, when we were boys. Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where I can find this man. In his office. Okay, I figured that much out. What's that container over there? Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They are just waiting to be loaded up. Told you. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know. We know. Bye-bye now. Goodbye. I wasn't a funny guy. The banner sacks under the weight of rain and snow. Wide waves of red. Okay, we should probably find said office in here. 
double click to run. Yeah, we know that. We know that. Ooh. The coffee in the giant thermos is still lukewarm. A stair made of pellets leading up. And apparently, this is... Oh my god, he is a big man. He is a very, very big man. But we will talk to him in the next episode, guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And drop that notification bell so that you don't miss out any episodes in the future. And we'll see you all in the next video. Until then, have the greatest of days. And stay as awesome as you are. I had to speak against Sim. Molesting that typewriter. God damn.